Thank you all so much for being patient with us. We had a really jam-packed agenda, an executive session agenda, and we were trying to get everything taken care of before we came out here and did the people's business. Um, so thank you for being here. Um, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Certainly. Good evening. Mr. Rickerman? Mr. McDowell? Mr. Duvall? Here. Mr. Vine? Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor here. Benjamin? Here. Would you all um, please stand and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance? Red McDowell, would you bless us with a word of prayer? You bestowed upon us for this time of community. Lord, we simply ask that you might touch us individually and collectively. Allow us to be sensitive to your will and to your way. Allow conversation to be involved, that we involve ourselves in before the betterment of your kingdom here on earth. Bless this city, bless those who dwell therein. We ask it in your name, amen. 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 Thank you. Is there a motion to adopt the agenda? So move. Is there any discussion? We'll move the previous question. Call, call the roll. Mr. Rickerman. Mr. McDowell, yes. Mr. Duvall, Aye. Mr. Vine, Mr. Davis, Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. Madam City Manager? Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, we would ask for any public input related to the agenda items as outlined. Please move forward. If there are none at this time, we would ask Council to approve the December 19, 2017 and February 6, 2018 City Council meeting minutes. A motion. I move. Second. second. Move and second. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll move the previous question. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. The council is asked to approve consent agenda items 10 through 18. Is there a motion? So move. Is there a second? Second. All right. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, we'll move the, I'm sorry, discussion. Mr. Rickerman? Yes. Get your microphone yes, on too, Dan. Item 13, Mr. Rickerman? Yes, please. Yes, sir. And these um, improvements have been a long time in coming. I know that the Martin Luther King Park community members have been involved and also briefed, Clint. Yes. And, and Vivian is here, president of the neighborhood. Yes. <clears throat> All right. Thanks, please. that um, the local citizens are in support of, of the project as well. Any specific questions? Yeah, I mean, can you describe the project? Oh, Dana, you're probably better suited than I am. For this thing. Sure. Uh, so what we're doing is uh, traditionally on the, let's see, uh, eastern side of Rocky Branch as it goes through um, MLK, that's the upper side, I guess, uh, there's areas that are traditionally wet. So what we're going to do is create uh, like man-made wetlands, so to speak, with boardwalks and educational opportunities and uh, dry out the areas of, that are more upland and grade it so that it can be used for more play fields. So our usable space is actually the same, but yet we're adding that um, educational component as well as uh, providing a lot of water quality, which this is an urban stream, so we're constantly trying to look for opportunities. So will that take the area there, if, so if you're looking at the park from the five-point side looking back, the area that was put, the riprap there that is used to slow it down, are you incorporating in that so it becomes It's the opposite part, side. It's, it's going to be opposite. Side. So we're not doing anything on that side to improve that at all? No, we've actually talked to the neighborhood about uh, taking out some of that riprap now that it's stabilized over there. Um, so that's something that we'll also be looking at. And I know um, Mr. Davis, our Parks and Rec Director, uh, has been talking about upgrading the facilities, some of the playground areas and stuff. Ms. Devine has been part of those discussions. So we've all been talking to the neighborhood quite a bit. Okay. And just on a, on a sidebar of that, so further down the stream as we get to Maxie Gregg, have we looked at taking part of that and creating uh, an excess what Absolutely. I would call reservoir and doing the same thing because that seems to be a popular thing now as to 
create, you know, some bridges and create a, a sure. bioswell, I guess is the proper term, or bioretention pond that, that really helps with the overflow so we're getting it so it's not choked up into the park anymore? Right. That's exactly what we're doing. Our program management firm, uh, we're under negotiations, and we should be able to announce that this week, I believe, is what procurement was telling us. In March, you'll be getting that before you, and they will be helping us identify areas, but we have that funding uh, where we can take a look and, at those opportunities, absolutely. Thank you very much. And Dana might be helpful. They do have schematics, and it's actually a very nice design. So if you could share that with the members of council so everybody sure. can see what it'll look like. Be happy to. I'll just send that email out and get those to you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, uh, we wanted to also for the record note that LAD Corporation of West Columbia is a woman-owned business enterprise. Okay. All right. Thank Fantastic. You. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, any further question? Uh, uh, Colorado. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Aye. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Vine. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mr. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. Moving into a period of presentations, we would ask the Reverend Clark McGriff, President of the Midlands Coalition of Churches, to come forward for a special recognition of the Honorable Sam Davis. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, uh, council members, uh, good evening. I'm Clark McGriff, uh, currently the pastor, or rather the uh, president of the Midland Coalition of Churches, which is a body, a 25-year-old body, uh, which uh, comprises about 31 churches in the greater metro area. Uh, each year, uh, we hold a Martin Luther King Jr. prayer breakfast uh, somewhere in the city uh, to recognize not only Dr. King's uh, legacy, but also the work and service of uh, members of our churches and other members of the community. At this past breakfast in January, this past January, uh, the uh, coalition recognized Council Davis for his many years of service, not only to this council, but also in the greater uh, metro community. And uh, we wanted to come to this body tonight and make that presentation in front of you and the rest of our community as well. So, Councilman Davis, Davis, if you would come, let us uh, let you. Yay. And it reads, uh, the Midland Coalition of Churches presents the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Leadership Award uh, to Councilman Sam Davis uh, for your untiring service as an administrator, organizer, and Christian leader, your outstanding leadership as a Christian educator, community, and civic leader as well on this 13th day of January, 2018. We appreciate your service, and we appreciate what you've done for our community. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Reverend McGrath. Deacon, it's always good seeing you too. Thank you. Thank you all for recognizing Sam's hard work. Speech, message. Mr. Dave, Mr. Mr. Davis does not like receiving awards, y'all. He does not like public recognition, uh, but sometimes it's good to just folks say thank you. And thank you, I, I appreciate it. Um, unexpected, but um, I'm just, uh, Pleased that um, there are some folks who are committed to um, the cause and, and working on behalf of fellow men with no expectations in return. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sam. Right, Madam City Manager. Mr. Davis, thank you, Reverend McGriff. The resolution uh, before you, Council, is resolution number R 2018 009. Approving the honorary naming of the eight, of the 1,000 block of Blossom Street between Assembly Street and Hugie Street, Ward One Way. What about so that? Moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion. I will tell you that I, I, I I'm I'm a, amongst a large group of council folks who have been waiting for formal recognition of this incredible neighborhood for a long time. I was shaking hands, and Ms. Maddie said, "You have no idea how long we've been waiting for this <laughs> for so long." And 
and, and God bless the, 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 the soul of Ms. Ms. Agnes Perez who, who come here and literally or figuratively grab us by our collars and our ears and, um, and make sure that she had us straight. And we see here in this body uh, the representation uh, the, 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 the children and the grandchildren of Ward 1, a uh, community that for so long led the, um, the cultural and, 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 and social and educational fabric of, of this community. And uh, in the name of urban renewal, uh, we displaced uh, so many uh, pillars of, of, of this community. Um, and probably the, the greatest benefit of it is that we spread people out all across the city. And people all across this community were able to benefit from the incredible rich fabric that made Ward 1 as strong as it was. I will tell you, um, uh, each and every one of you, and it, it's amazing uh, to it, see so many of you in individual capacity around this community. Um, it's rare when you see all of you together at one point, and it really helps you fully appreci appreciate uh, what the Ward 1 community has meant, not just to Columbia, South Carolina, but, but to the state and, and to the, this, this country. And um, it is our pleasure on behalf of uh, uh, the people of the city of Columbia to name the 1000 block of, of Blossom Street and between Hugh G and Assembly Street as Ward 1 Way. So please. Ms. Mary, I'm not sure if you, if you want to say a word or someone's going to say a word, and then we'd love to take a, a, a very quick photograph with everyone uh, memorializing this for posterity. Get on, get on the microphone, Ms. Mary. Get on the microphone so, people, so that people can hear you. We need people, we need people in cyberspace to hear you. We've got to have this on the record. Bobby Donaldson would not be happy if we didn't have this on the record for posterity, so please. Sir. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much yes, for inviting me to this podium today. Yes, it is a, the realization of what's happening in this, this, these halls that we'll call City Hall. And Mayor, we just want to say to you, the City Council, and everyone that's here, that we, on behalf of all of our ancestors have just been waiting for the day just to have this recognition and to just be, and we are honored that you all have decided to do this and to actually name the street along where we, most of us grew up and went to school, the Saxon Elementary School. And of course, on the corner, and I would like David to come and join me, please, Agnes' his son. <laughs> Alongside his mother's home at Park and Blossom Streets is now going to have the honor of being named Ward One Way. Amen. <laughs> so I'd like to just have David just to say a brief <laughs> <laughs> Thank you as well. Mr. Mayor, City Council, um, on behalf of my mother, Agnes Perez, and the family, I would just like to say thank you. Her passion was for her community that she was raised in to be recognized. And with this, all I can say is thank you. It's come to fruition. I'd like to thank the Ward 1 community and Dr. Donaldson in his absence for helping her dream to come true. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen.
Did we break the podium? <laughs> no. <clears throat> oh, man. Let's get out of here, man. Quick meeting. Keep on moving. Other matters here, Benjamin? Go ahead, Madam City Manager. Yes, sir. Item 21, council is asked to approve the installation of one additional street light each. So on moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, move the previous question. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Rickerman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Vine. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. Item 22, Mayor Benjamin and Council, is a continuation of the discussion from our uh, Mr. work session. Mr. Rickman. Mr. Rickman. Yes, sir. Daniel. I could ask Mr. Anderson a question before we do this real Absolutely. quickly. Absolutely. Since I'm we're. Sorry. I I had sent an email earlier with a petition from a neighborhood about Risington Way. No, um, Belfield. Belfield. I'm for, sorry. Yes. For the uh, speed the humps. Do you? Have we're you, actually doing the traffic counts on it. Okay. It is a DOT road. We do know that we're having some issues with DOT right now with speed humps. So depending on the outcome, we'll discuss with you once we get the speed counts done. Thank you. Okay. What area was that down here? Belfield. Was Delfield you said? What, what's Bill Field? No, it's my Belfield in oh. District 4. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, just check it. Hey, that, that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> just check it. Reverend McDowell said, what now, Belfield? <laughs> I didn't hear about that. <laughs> just check it. Thank you. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, Good catch, um, uh, Missy? Okay, so we were asked to come back. Um, if you recall, on February 6th, we did a joint presentation with a lot of departments about the city's affordable housing initiative. We were asked to come back with our recommendations so that y'all could actually memorialize them. So that's what we're doing today. These slides should look really familiar to you. We've extracted the ones with recommendations, so I'll just go through them real quick. Again, we're talking about leveraging funding opportunities. So tonight I'm going to talk about the two that are bold. Um, the one in the middle is actually our DR money, and that will be allocated per our action plan for DR, and that will be available um, in the coming future. We will issue a NOFA to make that funding available for projects. So talking about the revolving loan fund dollars, we are recommending we reallocate $250,000 from the CDBG revolving loan fund to um, dedicate it for an affordable housing initiative. Staff will develop that criteria. You, you see a list of some of the criteria. We will obviously have to follow a lot of the CDBG guidelines for that funding. Um, so that, that's one of the action items we're asking you to approve tonight. Another one is another $250,000 from the general fund revolving loan. And that will not have quite as many restrictions as the CDBG dollars. But again, we will develop criteria. This could be citywide instead of just our targeted area. Uh, I absolutely support both of them and ready to act on them. I would ask as we're de developing the criteria, let's also give, I think, added weight to um, those who are looking to leverage other funds as well. I mean, so there are uh, other sources of, of, can, uh, of funding. Can we add to that, Mr. Mayor? I think one of the things that we learned in Charlotte that was very interesting is that a lot of the housing by having expedited uh, services and Absolutely. maybe, you know, looking at alternatives and um, depending on where they are, if they have to go through a different, you know, DDRC or something like that, there's a different way to help people get through that process to make them, to create the same kind of 
the, the, the places that we saw had mixed use, so you didn't know who, who was an affordable unit and who wasn't. And it, it was really fantastic. The Crosland Company did it. EW yeah. made that trip yeah. for us twice, and it was very eye-opening. And we haven't seemed to be able to make that happen here, so I'd like to try to see how we could include that in this right. as you're doing the guidelines. Okay, and we have talked a lot about blended income projects instead of um, sure. targeting just low-income Mixed, income, mixed income, yeah, sure. The other recommendation, if you recall, was related to the tax revenues generated from student housing projects and Selma mm -hmm. Station. This request is simply to ask staff to consider programming this during the bu budget discussions that are coming up. So mm -hmm. um, the following slide is just a summary of those three action items. Sure. All right. So we're talking, so we're talking about a, a roughly 861000 Per year, added to the pot with, with, with preference to be given to uh, uh, leverage dollars, as well as consideration for expedited permitting and design uh, 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 added to the criteria. We'll talk about the criteria more, but um, adding these, uh, the potential to leverage these into significant resources for uh, more um, housing for people who, <coughs> who, who um, want to call Columbia home is, is, is a big deal. So, is there, is there a request for action tonight? So moved. Yes, staff. Council had asked staff to bring back these sure. recommendations just to memorial. So moved. Is there a second? Second, second. Mr. Mayor and Mr. Duval. Um, I just want to point out that the last item, which is taking the money from the uh, student housing, is staff is to consider allocating those taxes. So, right. if we get into a really tight budget and we need three hundred sixty-one thousand. That would be money that could go into the general fund. So I'm I'm perfectly happy with putting it towards. It's money. It's money that is in the general fund. Uh, but staff, yeah, latitude to right. to use it otherwise. Absolutely, right. absolutely. No, no, it, it, it is in general fund. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor and Mr. Duvall, to your point, we wanted to be very careful of the wording of the motion so that it's of consideration, if mm -hmm. appropriate. You know, based off funds availability. Absolutely. absolutely. Yes, sir. absolutely. And, I, and I'm excited about the CDBG DR. I mean, because I, I see it as a as a possibility. Some of the really fantastic projects that we've had on you just you know um, ready to get going. We need to get get those get those moving. Um, Mr. Mayor, why don't you? Yes, sir. I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, Davis. Reiterate, I think, for the public, the origins of these dollars and what you're talking about now. Sure. Would you reiterate for the public the origins of these dollars? I will. The revolving loan fund from CDBG was generated through CDBG dollars, so that money has some restrictions to it <coughs> of how it can be used. So that's why those guidelines will be different than the general fund. He meant student housing. I apologize. The, 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 the new tax revenue from student housing uh, has grown significantly in Columbia. Um, we're talking about sequestering. Uh, these dollars having the latitude to sequester these, sequester these dollars uh, to to help um, develop more workforce housing in the city. So the significant growth we've seen in student housing uh, using these funds as, as shown on the screen above us right now. Okay. Yeah. Um, Ooh, but the but um, moved the previous question. Clerk Colorado. Mr. Rickman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Devine. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. All right, let's, let's move forward with, with the, the criteria development kind of as soon as we can. Let's get something before us so we can give some folks go ahead to, to rock and roll on some projects. <laughs> Thank you so much for your work on this, guys. Yes. I'm coming back with my memo, too, just so y'all know. I'm, I'm coming back. Okay. Oh, absolutely. <clears throat> oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. No, no, no I, I got you. Oh. And, and Mr. Mayor, can I back and add <clears throat> to your memo? And, and there are a lot of folks anxiously awaiting that and an action by this county uh, council um, just yesterday, the developer that we stood with for the senior housing project or North Main, um, I think at your urging is looking at other areas within the city. They want to be a partner and invest more in Columbia. And I think that if we have the right tools, we'll have a lot of private developers coming to the table. Oh yeah, we high quality developers from who are local and those who are from nearby and, and far away. We want to make sure that we remain a city for all people. Uh, I think it's a it's exciting prospect. Thank you, Madam City Manager. Yes, sir. We have one item from the work session for council to take action upon, which is.
the approval of the request for funding from the hospitality tax fund. These would be surplus dollars and to amend the fiscal year 2017-2018 hospitality tax budget. Yeah, good. And we had a robust discussion and obviously there's not unanimity um, um, and a, 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 a number of opinions that have been shared all um, um, well healed and well intentioned. Uh, but I want to go ahead and make this motion and, and we'll have a, a discussion period if necessary and then um, we'll move forward. I want to make a motion to make the following allocations from the hospitality tax surplus on security cameras, hospitality district $75,000, the city center partnership ambassador program $40,000, Pimenta Capital City Classic $7,000, NCAA basketball tournament planning for the 2019 tournament $75,000, state firefighters conference $6,000. Regional Sports Council for Marketing, $75,000. Uh, for the Girl Scouts, $130,000. Uh, Language Buzz, the Cinco de Mayo Festival, $5,000. Pamela Opera, $10,000. The Five Points Food and Wine Festival, $10,000. The Salad Salamander Expansion of the Walking Tour, $5,620. And the Black Expo, $25,000. Uh, <coughs> in addition to that motion, I want to, uh, those all FY1718. Uh, dollars. Uh, in addition, we want to make the final allocation from the, for the fiscal year 1819, uh, a three-year commitment to the Congaree Vista Guild Clean and Safe Program of $115,000 each year. Is there a second? Second. second. Is there a dis uh, discussion? All right. I think everyone's on, on record at the work session uh, with the concerns and questions and, and positions. We'll move the previous question to Clerk Colorado. Mr. Rickman? No. Mr. McDowell. Abstain. You got a vote. Yeah, 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 there's no abstain. <laughs> no. Mr. Mr. McDowell. I mean, Mr. Duval. No. Mr. Vine. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. <laughs> Are you asking me to change, Mr. Mayor? I am, I am. He's asking you to consider. Now he, he, he didn't want you to change. Abstain? He can't abstain. He's, 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 he's moving in the right direction. <laughs> I got it. I got it. I got it. Well, I'm going to amend my motion. Uh, is, is, that, is that right? We can't amend it. We've already voted. We're in the middle of a vote. I'm not sure that this is parliamentary cor correct. You've got you to gotta vote it through and then. then yeah, we finished it. Yeah, he's gonna. He's gonna yeah. secondary. Mr. Mayor, I call a point of order. Point of order, Mr. Mayor. I'm going to amend my motion. <laughs> you can't amend the motion, Mr. Mayor. We're in the middle of the vote. You got to get continue this vote, and then then when the, uh, you can make another motion. Against it, can make a, you can make a separate motion after that. All Is there a substitute? You gonna do that? I, I can go ahead and, and finish the roll call. And you want to make yeah. a, a motion? Alternative motion. Um, so, well, aye. Uh, is there a, another motion? Yeah, I like the substitute. 
Yes, sir. Am I substituting correctly? Yes, sir. Was the, the substitute? Sir, it, what, what was what was the outcome of the first motion? The motion it failed, fails. Mr. Mr. Okay. Mr. Duval. All right. Not a substitute, but this is the forming of a new motion. Yes, sir. Uh, you can. Why don't you, I suppose I have to read them all. Why don't you say you want to, the three? The three that yeah. Mr. Mr. Let me. Um, McDowell with the with the exception of the names that we've called that we consider the three there are three three areas that I'd like to reconsider for March 6 that's the language arts buzz uh, Cinco de Mayo uh, the Palmetto Opera and Black Page Black Expo okay all right so a motion on all of the others with the exception of those three I'll second that motion is there any discussion we'll move the previous question clerk Colorado no Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? No. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? I am, thank God. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and um, the others uh, to be added for consideration on the six per Mr. McDowell's motion. All right. Um, Item 24, um, we've had, a, 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 I think, a compelling presentation, uh, discussion with the South Carolina Progressive Network regarding the Majesta Simpson School for Human Rights uh, to the Environment and Infrastructure Committee. There's a motion to send it there for this full discussion and presentation to the council. So moved. Is Second. There any discussion? We'll move the previous question. The clerk, call the roll. Mr. Rickman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Aye. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Thank All right. Um, let's get that meeting set up pretty quick. I think I know there's some questions that, well, staff questions we had to make sure we resolve as well regarding this project. So let's make sure we have the uh, questions answered. <laughs> Um, Mr. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Mr. we'll Mr. meet when we're ready, won't we? Huh? <laughs> who, who is the chair? I'm the oh, chair. You're the chair? Oh, chair. You're the chair? Okay, okay. <laughs> the, um, um, I, Mr. Rickman and I will get together and we'll let you know. All right. Um, um, Nikki, anyone sign in? Okay. All right. Is there a non-debatable motion to adjourn? So move. So move. Is, is there a second? Second. And with the previous question, the clerk called right Mr. Rickman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Be good, Mr. everyone. Mr. Vine. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye.